Delegates, it is a great pleasure to introduce the 2011-12 Maryland Teacher of the Year, Joshua Parker. Joshua is a graduate of the College of Notre Dame of Maryland and teaches English and Language Arts at Windsor Mill Middle School in Baltimore County. That's why Cheryl is about to jump out of her chair. And he's not just a fantastic teacher. He has organized the middle school all-male reading club. Yes. Talk to him about it. Directed a top 10 finishing black soccer team. Coached a boys junior varsity basketball team. Co coordinated a summer program directed at engaging local youth and implementing a comprehensive after school program at two middle schools. I don't have to tell you, those of us who were there to see him win this honor, know that he is an impressive young educator, taking seriously his ability to be a role model for his students. He is a credit to the higher aspiration that we all share as educators. After being named this year, which we were there to give you hugs and kisses from afar, Maryland Teacher of the Year, I want to re say one line that we heard him say, and I quote, the opportunity that my profession affords me is the greatest reward I can reap. I get a daily opportunity to advance society. End of his quote. Keep saying that, I love it. Joshua was just named Teacher of the Year a week ago yesterday. So we, MSEA, have the privilege of being one of his first official stops as Teacher of the Year. Let's give him a big hand as we congratulate him and welcome him to the stage. I'm going to take this out of your way. Okay. Good morning, delegates. Um, I'd like to first thank Mr. Mendelson and the delegates all across this great state for allowing me to come before you today. I am honored to be in the presence of such dedicated educators and principal practitioners. Uh, it is because of you that the award that I now hold has any merit and any weight. Henry Adams once said that a teacher affects eternity. One can never tell where their influence stops. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all, as well as the nearly 80,000 teachers throughout the state of Maryland for positively shaping the eternity of our children in your classrooms. We are where we are, and we know what we know because of a teacher. Thank you so much. Hall of Fame baseball player and civil rights activist Jackie Robinson once said that a life is unimportant except in the impact it has on others. That quote really didn't mean anything to me when I was coming up through school. It only gained meaning when I entered the classroom. I was selfish. Uh, when I was coming up in the ninth grade in Friendly High School in Prince George's County, um, I see you Prince George's, I thought I was gonna be an NBA player. I was going to be a star. Uh, the world revolved around me. Uh, people were going to see me and come from all over the world to toast to my athletic feats of greatness. Uh, however, <laughs> I had places to go and people to see, and teaching was not on my radar. Okay. That began to change in 10th grade when I first experienced the power of teaching and the power of literacy. I can still remember sitting in that 10th grade classroom and hearing and reading Harlem by Langston Hughes for the very first time. 
What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore in a run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? Then, after that, I remember hearing for the first time Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. These poets, along with Harper Lee, uh, Shakespeare, and Shinoe Chibe, provided me with a window into the human condition that I never saw before. I experienced the power of literacy to change a life and I never was the same again. Besides, I needed to recite Harlem because the NBA thing didn't really work out. <laughs> it was a dream deferred. <laughs> I didn't make any basketball teams in my entire high school career. Uh, so, but I still ran away from my calling. Um, while completing my undergraduate degree at Towson University, um, I see you Towson. All right, Towson's everywhere, I'm sure. While completing my undergraduate degree, I did everything but teaching. I had a television show, a newspaper column, a radio show, all revolving around sports. I minored in English, but majored in sports communication. But little did I know that all those activities that I was running towards placed me closer to teaching than I realized. My epiphany came when I began substitute teaching at Lock Raven Middle School in Baltimore County. I needed extra money because a sports producer's salary wasn't enough. <laughs> it was there that I again became that student in 10th grade. Only this time, I was learning the eternal impact a teacher can have on students as a role model, encourager, counselor, and friend. I experienced the power of teaching to change a life, and I never was the same again. While I was teaching one day, a student started staring at me kind of in a funny way. Um, I thought they needed to use a bathroom or maybe needed some redirection. Um, so I went to redirect him, and he shook me off, and he just looked at me and said, you love us, don't you? You really love teaching. I just simply replied, yes, I do. I, and that student and so many other students and parents could see the passion I have to serve students by providing literacy instruction that has the potential to change lives. This passion has led me through many tough days. All right, raise your hand if you remember those tough days in teaching where you feel like you're saying things that are not being heard, okay? Raise your hand if you feel like sometimes the words you use are wasted. I feel that way sometimes. But I have learned that seeds of frustration sown with faith eventually yield products of resilience. And, and that's a key point. Um, it doesn't matter that the newspapers don't cover you leaving out with that box of papers to grade over the weekend, or that the newspapers don't feel that pain in your back after standing up for three hours. Your words are heard by your students. They hear you. Never stop sewing. Keep sewing. Keep teaching. Keep sewing. Keep teaching. There is great recompense of rewards. This resiliency and faith help me to understand that as I provide meaningful context and purposes for reading, students begin to see the full range of emotions and thought contained in writing. They begin to see that there are more purposes to reading than to inform, to entertain, to persuade, to express. English teachers know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> we read to be enlightened, to be encouraged, to be provoked, to be romanced to experience the beauty of well-worded thought, to experience the challenge by the wisdom of Atticus Finch, to be jazzed by the blues of Langston Hughes, and to be warned by the ambition of Walter Lee Younger. This is what literacy can be, and transmitting a passion and awareness of the energy contained in books is especially important for our underperforming students, which has been the cause of my career. While in middle, t middle school, I created a weekly all-male reading club. Our book of focus was The Contender. When I moved to high school, I taught an all-male language arts class that was labeled standard, a gifted and talented curriculum. And guess what? They thrived. And now that I'm the language arts department chair at Windsor Mill Middle School, I again direct a male mentoring program that uses literacy as a foundation for moral development. 
I believe in literacy that lives and improves the lives of all our students. We've been aiming for the stars of successful test scores, but if we aim for the sun of instruction that deepens the context and purposes for reading, we'll get the stars, the moons, and everything in between. So let's position text and instruction so that children's lives are changed. Let's position ourselves and our instruction to not only support students with IEPs, but students in AP. Let's position ourselves as role models so that other aspiring basketball players and music artists embrace the new idea that those who can't entertain and those who can teach. These are the main messages, among others, that I wish to impart to other educators during my tenure as Maryland Teacher of the Year. If we are to continue a tradition of excellence as a number one public school system in the country, we need to concern ourselves with thinking higher and deeper with literacy instruction and instruction in general. Voltaire once said that the instruction we find in books is like fire. We catch it from our neighbors, kindle it at home, communicate it to others, and it becomes a property of us all. As I speak on behalf of this great state, America the Miniature, I want to carry that fire that I first found in the 10th grade, but now see in the eyes of my eager students, to teachers and youth, so that a spark starts in their souls and propels them into a service that impacts the world. It is my honor to represent you all, and I am humbled by the opportunity to serve this great state where we've elected two of the last past National Teachers of the Year. I think it's time for a third. Thank you for your support. 